Hello everyone, I'm John with JP Strategic Investments, and today I'm going to talk about something that is pretty frustrating, but unfortunately not too surprising. And that is that the SEC is actually investigating Wall Street bets and other Reddit forums for collusion to manipulate GameStop stock, as well as other stocks like AMC and Bed Bath & Beyond. So let me explain exactly what's going on here, and then I'll get into what some experts have said about this. So basically what the SEC is trying to prove here is that Reddit users plotted together to manipulate GameStop stock as well as other stocks to cause a short squeeze and the surrounding volatility. So at first this might seem like exactly what Wall Street bets and its users did, but it's not quite as simple as that. Individual retail investors in the stock market are regulated much differently than professional institutions. And one of these differences is that unlike professional institutions, individual retail investors are actually allowed to discuss and decide on certain investments and trades as a group. The SEC actually has a specific section in their rules and regulations dedicated to investment clubs, and it clearly states that these clubs may choose to invest in certain stocks or other securities together, and may even pool their money and decide to invest in these certain stocks by voting. These clubs and their members are not regulated by the SEC unless they charge for their membership or certain members within the group charge for their advice and participation. As far as I'm aware, this does not apply to Reddit. While different subreddits like Wall Street Bets do have certain restrictions on who can post and what they can post, none of these restrictions involve money or any other form of payment. This means that so far it would seem that according to the SEC's own rules, none of the Reddit users have actually done anything wrong, even if they had decided to buy these stocks together as a group. Before I go any further on this, I want to go over what Bart Zhao Yushen said in a recent interview. He is a professor of finance at a university in France, and I apologize to Professor Yushen if I mispronounced his name. But he gives some interesting insights here as to exactly what the SEC has to prove and whether or not they will be able to prove it. I just want to quickly step in with a follow-up on that, uh, Professor, because at the end of the day, from what Mandy is saying, you know, you look at these screens, you look at these chat boards, and you are seeing the back and forth of information and heavy exchange of information. Wouldn't that qualify as collusion? Well, it is uh, uh, information, but there is a lot of information uh, not necessarily about collusion. Right? It's information about people trading. It's uh, a look at the stock boards and the price goes up. It's, it's nothing uh, about uh, a collusion in general. You need to establish certain kind of, uh, uh, again, malintention intention in the first place to, to work against something. And that evidence is, is quite difficult to establish. So Professor Yushen here makes the point that just because people are talking about buying the stock or even planning to buy the stock together, it doesn't necessarily mean that they are guilty of collusion as the law is written. This is because for individual investors to be guilty of this, the SEC has to prove that there was malintention on the part of the investors. So I know malintention is a fancy legal term, and that can make things here a little bit confusing. So let me elaborate on this a bit more. Basically, what Professor Yushen is saying is that the SEC has to prove that the Reddit users were not only planning to buy the stock as a group, but also that they did so with the intention of illegally manipulating the stock. This is because it's almost impossible to know exactly what someone's intentions are without them explicitly saying them. Furthermore, there is strong evidence that the manipulation of the stock price was not the actual intent of the Reddit users. The most obvious example of this is that the main reason most of these investors were encouraging others to buy these stocks is that these stocks had extremely high short interest, leaving them vulnerable to a short squeeze. This is a concept that any experienced investor is familiar with, and it's a completely legitimate reason to buy a stock. This makes it even harder for the SEC to prove that the intent was to manipulate the stock because there was a valid reason to buy the stock. Proof of intent almost always relies on false information given by the accused. If investigators can prove that the investors accused of manipulating the stock convinced others to buy by misleading them, then that makes it far easier to prove that their intent was manipulation. In this case, the fact that the accused gave a very obvious valid reason to buy the stock makes us almost impossible. On top of this, Professor Yushen goes on to explain that the collusion case is even weaker because it's very unlikely that the retail investors on these forums alone were able to cause this entire movement in the stock. Because of the sheer volume of shares that were traded, especially when the stock was in the high 300s, Professor Yushen finds it very hard to believe that the amount of money changing hands was entirely or mostly due to retail investor trading, and that it's very likely that some institutions jumped in to take advantage of the short squeeze as well. This makes it even harder for the SEC to prove collusion because first they have to prove that the retail investors were actually able to cause the moves that happened in these stocks with little to no help from other institutions. So basically this means that it's very unlikely that anything will come from an investigation into Wall Street bets or any other stock market forums. 
and it's sad to see that the focus of this SEC investigation is on retail traders as opposed to the large institutions and brokers that have blocked retail traders from making certain trades and likely manipulated the market over the past week or so. What's worse is that the SEC has even gone as far to say that their investigation into Wall Street bets and other stock market forums is being done in an effort to protect retail investors. Which is almost worse than Robinhood saying that they're not allowing investors to buy a certain stock for their own protection. I actually give credit here to CNBC anchor David Faber for calling this out when it was recently being talked about on CNBC. You mentioned that SEC statement a moment ago, uh, reading it a bit more in full here. Uh, Extreme stock price volatility has the potential to expose investors to rapid and severe losses and undermine market confidence. Uh, They go on to say, David, uh, issuers must ensure compliance with federal securities laws. Uh, We will act to protect investors when facts demonstrate abusive or manipulative trading activity that is prohibited by law. Yeah, I wonder who that ends up protecting in some way. You know, if that's a reference to Robin Hood, I don't really know. You know, the the, the best way to protect is to, to make sure your firm stays in business. Um, but the main idea here is that the SEC really doesn't have a case against Wall Street bets. And as David Faber pointed out, it's unclear who the SEC is really trying to protect here. It'll be interesting to see what other investigations come about as a result of this entire situation, but unfortunately, I doubt any big firms will see large repercussions from this. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please consider liking and subscribing for more videos like this and other stock market analysis. Other than that, see you next time, and have a great day.